Mayor Morris. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Rapertis. Still here. Alderman Green. Here. Uh, Alderman Welch. Here. Alderman Madre. Here. Alderman Jones. Here. Mayor, you do have a quorum. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Can you do it again? Yep. I yep. uh, pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'm going to take a slide. I pledge to the city, Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Thank you, everyone. Uh, we have a special presentation. Uh, I'll see. Uh, Mr. Doogie couldn't make it today, I think. Uh, our county treasurer, but he sent in some replacements. Uh, Spencer Lewis and Constable Justin West. Uh, you would like this address? Yeah, sure. And, well, I'm sorry, I'm sorry I'm the B team. Uh, I'm the constable in Lake City in Princewood area. Spencer's the what's your title? Communications director. Communications director for the county. So um, just a quick recap. I, I know uh, Hank has probably talked to most of you. Um, his goal this year in his election was to eliminate the county treasurer's position. He ran in the primary election and won 80% of the vote, roughly, to do that. Uh, he's foregone his salary, so he's actually filing an affidavit. He does not receive a salary. He's doing the job now. Um, and most of the questions are about who's going to maintain the duties of the office. Well, those duties are being done by a, a smaller crew because some of the folks in the office have already retired. Um, so he's actually been doing the work that's going to be absorbed by the treasurer's or the, the auditor's office and professional services, the budget office, are going to absorb the other duties. Some of what's done is outsourceable for a fraction of the cost of what it costs to pay someone to do the job. So all that's being taken into account. They have a plan in place. Um, and then there have been resolutions from the county, Hitchcock, LaMarcus, looking at theirs tonight, several other cities. I believe League City's also filed the resolution already. So all the communities in Galveston County have been coming together to support it. Now the, the goal is a, a um, constitutional amendment that will come on the ballot in November. So that's, that's where he's working. Um, Mays Middleton is filing a bill in the Senate. Uh, Dr. Greg Bond is filing a bill in the House to get it onto the ballot for this year. So a lot of effort's been put in place. Um, I know Hank's been in Austin five, six times this year already. So um, any questions you have, we're, we're happy to answer them. I would like to add also, I think you may have missed that. Elim One moment. Eliminating the treasurer's office will save the county and the taxpayers roughly half a million dollars a year, uh, which is incredible. And since uh, there's other counties in Texas that have gotten rid of their treasurer's office, and since then, no county has ever reinstated their treasurer's office after getting rid of it. We'll, we'll have some, we'll have some discussion when we get to item, item in the new business. Okay. Very good. Okay. Thank, Thank you. We'll, we'll be here for questions. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate y'all. Uh, item number four, we had a public hearing at 530, and uh, we will be discussing that in the new business. And now it's time for the uh, uh, citizens' request to speak before council. Miss um, uh, Kaylin Wilford is up first. How are y'all doing today? Uh, Hi, so thanks, Mayor, for getting this on the agenda sure so we can talk about it. So one of the things that I think would be really important that would help our community quite a bit is if we would look at put putting no parking signs along Bob Smith. The park, no parking signs would begin at the end of the sanctuary, which is Pelican Road, to the back of Bob Smith. Bob Smith currently has two no parking signs at the very end of it already, so it would be a continuation of that. Uh, jo Jolly Roger has no parking signs all the way down from the curb to the back of the roadway. By placing the parking signs in this location, it would not prevent anyone from stopping and watching the sunsets or having mowing crews come in and mow. The goal would be to prevent people who are coming into our subdivision, who are not property owners, who are parking along the roadway, they're driving over the plants, they're leaving trash, they're cutting underneath the fence, and they're going into the marsh to do uh, wade fishing. That's what the majority of them are doing. 
But what we're observing since we live out there off Fox Moon is that they're trampling down the marsh grass, they're leaving trash and debris, and uh, it's something that we as citizens need to be concerned about. You know, I joined the JVIC Homeowners Association to help improve the community and get involved. And one of the things we did was take down the old uh, bob wire and T posts so we could mow along there. And one of the things that we would like to propose is to adopt a roadway within the city. And that way people can be active about cleaning and keeping things nice along the roads. If we put up no parking signs, then we can clean along the fence line. We can have people adopt that. It would give us the ability to pick up the trash because right now, as y'all are aware, along Bob Smith in particular, because of the debris, we get a considerable amount of trash that blows up into the debris, into the weeds, and it's hard to get in there and clean it out because you've got broken limbs and debris in there and, uh, and the rattlesnakes in the summer. So if we could implement the no parking along this way, it would not limit any, it would be past the narrow streets, which are King, Kingston Way, Magna Way, and so those people could continue to park along Bob Smith if they needed to, to accommodate their homes. It would be simply to protect our marshlands and prevent people from staying there late at night. We give our police the opportunity to go out there and give warnings, hopefully first, and then second tickets for people that were violators. We could keep it cleaner, we could make it easier for mowing, we let people adopt the roadways, keep the trash down, and that really take care of our marsh. So that that was my proposal for the no parking on that area. So do you have any questions for me? Um, can't do questions yet. Oh, we'll, we'll do discuss it okay, this. sorry, I thought y'all <laughs> could ask me questions too. So okay, thank y'all. Thank you, Thank you. Uh, yeah, one more thing. Ginger Jones. Two things. Uh, one, I want to remind everybody to come by in April. It's going to be at the church again. <laughs> but what I want to ask about is the uh, water increases. I would like to know what other communities around here, because I've been looking at some of them, and theirs is really either lower or at the same as we are now. And I'd like to see if there's a reason why we're thinking we'll have to increase again because we just had an increase where they you know, from what is it the minor the, the amount that you pay whether you use it or not that went up some so that's why i was wondering about that okay. thank okay. you we'll be discussing more of that during the new business uh next person will be uh Ms. Andrea Spearing, is she on the phone? Yes, let me see. Andrew? Yes. Okay, you're you're on. Okay, um, how come I can't hear the meeting in general? That I, I, I should be able to, well, um, because I thought when I called in this number, I could hear everything. I, I don't know, I have an answer for that. Okay, is, am I speaking to city council? Yes, you yes. are. Um, okay, I, I, I um, this is Andrea Spearing, 16617 Jamaica Beach Road. Um, I have a couple things. One, I don't know why I cannot hear the entire meeting because I thought when I called in that I should be able to remotely hear the meeting. So I'm hoping someone can address this future moving forward that um, I don't just get put on hold until it's my turn to speak, but that I am allowed to hear the goings on of the council meeting as if I was there, because in the past, that's what I've been able to do. Uh, that aside, I would like to thank you guys for the opportunity to address city council. And I specifically want to thank two of the directors I would like to specifically thank the police uh, chief for putting actual numbers and um, important actions up in his comments and to give us information about crime rates, arrests, things like that in Jamaica Beach. I think as a resident here, that's a really important piece of information for me to have and I truly appreciate his openness in giving us that information. 
Secondly, I'd like to thank the Director of Operations, uh, Robert, for his report. I had the opportunity to actually meet Robert last week, and um, I want to thank you personally for taking care of removing the sand from Buccaneer and the restriking of Buccaneer. It's so much better, and I know you addressed this in your report. Um, I have a couple of concerns about that, and one is, will the new side asphalt areas be marked on the road with people logos so that they're noted as pedestrian lanes and not golf cart lanes or passing lanes? And secondly, I would like to request that the city install stop a four-way stop at Buccaneer and Jamaica Beach Road. Uh, golf carts and other vehicles speed through the light at 30.05 on their way to the beach. And by the time they hit Jamaica Beach Road, they're going fairly fast. And occasionally when they hit the beach, because of the current and the erosion on the beach, uh, there's water and they can't actually drive straight through. Also, there with the pedestrian lanes, I'm concerned with the speeding vehicles. So I'm hoping that um, City Council can address uh, the speeding on that whole two block area of Buccaneer and I think that can be resolved by simply installing a four way stop at that location um, protecting both pedestrians, golf cart and vehicle safety. Again, I would like to thank the um, two directors for giving us a lot of information in their reports and I appreciate the ability to speak to city council and I would hope from this point forward that I would be able to hear the rest of the meeting. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, the reports uh, uh, reports from directors of police and fire, uh, actually uh, of the directors of police, uh, were in the packets. Does anyone have any questions for that? Sign up. This is a workshop is where we get y'all more of the crowd involved. Uh, that is the workshop style meetings. This is a business meeting. Um, um, so this is one we will be just discussing this amongst ourselves, uh, the council. Uh, that's the way this is meeting it was called for, a regular meeting or what they call a business meeting, also known as a business meeting. Uh, but the workshops, is, which we also have, is where we look for discussion uh, from the citizens. So, with that being said, do, is there any... Mayor, may I make one comment? Sure. The packets are available on the city website. They are posted up the Friday before the business meeting. So all, that inf all the information we're looking at is available on the city website. And it will remain up there so we can go back and look at it. And it will be done that way from now on, so we can uh, help out there. Well, with that being said, we'll move on to item number seven, uh, which is uh, comments, reports from members of council. Uh, Woody, do you have anything? No, I hope everyone had a nice uh, had good holiday and. Uh, I hope it doesn't rain too much tomorrow. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm going to skip my report. The mayor has advised me that next month we're going to give a detailed report as to the city standings, projects that were completed, and projects that are in the works. Tonight's going to be a very long meeting, so I'm going to save my long comments for that one. One of my main issues was the water supply, but we'll be covering that later on in the agenda. I was asked by the police department, however, they really need your help. I know it's great to have the chief's phone number and reach out to call the chief or the lieutenant or the officer on duty, but it's causing a problem. If you have a non-emergency, if you're not calling 911, they urge you to call dispatch, which is 409-737-1800. The reason for this is they keep reporting. 
So say you're complaining about your neighbor's noise. If you call the chief, he goes out there and checks on it, there's no report. If they wanna go follow up, it's usually on the second call that they can, I wanna get my terminology right. First contact is usually a warning. The second contact will be, in, will be elevated to the next level, including citations. All right, so please, once again, call, go through dispatch so it can do be documented, they can record it, and we can have stats for all our different types of calls. Once again, non-emergency dispatch, 409-737-1800. That's it. Thank you, sir. That's it. It's been a while, huh? <laughs> uh, huge thank you to all the volunteers at the park for the, for the job you all did. It, that was, again, uh, fantastic things everyone and, and mr. mayor just a, a comment of mine I would like us to go to a uh, semi-monthly meeting rhythm like we used to have but it's, it seems like tonight is exactly the reason why I want to do that we have a bunch of items for discussion and we should be dividing that discussion and building up into shorter meetings because uh, we're we, we cut into our citizens time if you want to 7 7 30 8 o'clock I, I second that. Um, <coughs> that's a good talk. And because I'm a new counselor, I did appreciate when we had the, you know, double pipe meetings like that. Um, and I think it'd be a good thing to consider maybe thinking about that again. As far as report, um, Robert asked me to look at, and these things are starting to come up, and, and they need to come up, counselor. Um, he, Robert asked me to look at uh, some of our permit fee schedule. I did that. I sat down with Nola, and she went through this list of our standard permits with me. And uh, she's very helpful and knowledgeable. And she handles a tremendous lot of things like this, and, and she has the background to do it. But anyway, what what she. She uh, marked up certain ones that she thought would, would be good for us to increase the rate, permit rates on. And um, it's not a lot, but it, it comes down to those that have to be inspected. Many times a guy has to go back twice, even three times. So the amount we're asking the resident to pay is inadequate, to, in some cases, even to pay for it. So, I marked this up, Robert. I'm going to give these to you. Okay. I don't think. He also attended the JBIC meeting on Saturday, and it was a very good one. And heard a lot of good things that really impressed me. And they're moving forward with a lot of different things. I'm not going to go through them. Or you know, on the travel log or anything, but the intent is good, and I was really pleased that they're, that it seems, and I hope that we'll get closer together with the city and the JBIC and, and begin to, to continue to work together on these projects. They have several things they're doing to clean up, different things. We're doing the same thing with our beautification um, group. But it was a very good meeting, and, and, I, and, and I got a lot out of it. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. I attended the West Galveston Island Properties Owners Association and talked with my friend and our Texas State Representative, Terry Leo Wilson. There were Texas Marshals, Sheriffs, Constables, Galveston's Chief of Police was also there. It was a sea of officers. Most of you know that my passion is to share stars for troops with our first responders, and I gave out plenty <laughs> that day. Terry Mon, the chairman of Wiggy Coa, allowed me to share a brief statement for, about Stars for Troops, and I was able to talk to the entire group, group about our mission, and was able to talk um, and ask for flags to be donated and dropped off at City Hall. As always, it was well received. I was able to share lots of stars that day and met some very fine men in uniform. Um, the video is on Facebook in my group, Jamaica Beach Reporters, and on YouTube. Um, with um, what came up in the, in the um, agenda for today, 
um, tonight. I wanted some more clarification about increasing our reserves from 18 to 30. So I talked to Chief Garvey, um, Deborah Tabbert, and I came over and have a wonderful um, educational um, chat with Garvey. Thank you so much for taking time to explain things with me. And um, he said that many of our questions could actually be um, answered with uh, having a copy of the Jamaica Beach Police Department Standard of Operations. I asked for a copy of it, Chief Gary explained for the mayor, that the Department of Standard of Operations could be obtained with an open record request. So um, tonight I will be um, giving a, Debbie another, open, uh, another op open record request. Thank you again, Chief, for taking time to explain this to us. And thank you so much for your police reports. I'm so impressed. It gave us more information than we've had in many years. Also, as I do every year, I went to the Galveston Courthouse and got voter registration cards. I left some with Debbie, um, and she'll have them here at City Hall, and I'll have a few available with me. If you'd like to register to vote for the next city election, you'll need to do that before April 5th. We currently have 764 registered voters in Jamaica Beach. Three seats are up for election. My seat, Gil's seat, and the mayor's seat. Last is uh, Way West Grill will have their pie in the face tomorrow. She's offering free food. She's gonna feed us all on her day off. And that's tomorrow um, between four and 6 p.m. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, all guys. Uh, next item is number eight, which is consent agenda and approval of minutes. Uh, approval of minutes from a regular city council meeting from November 21st, 2022. Do I have a motion? Is there, is there any, just motion to discuss? Yeah. Motion to discuss meetings from 1121 to 2022. I'll second. Second, okay. Any discussion? <coughs> okay, uh, ready to vote. All in favor, accept. Aye. I'm going to abstain. I have not read your own card. Correct. That's the chair. Yeah. Next item up for discussion is a uh, new business. Uh, number one is discussion, consideration, take action. To approve ordinance number 2023-01, renewing the ordinance of 2018-6, which is a juvenile cur curfew and for an additional three years. Basically, what we have to do is uh, a lot of these ordinances, we have to come back and reinstate them or, or do away with them every three years. Um, this, do, we, do I have a motion to open this up for discussion? Motion to... Uh, discuss ordinance 2023-01, renewing ordinance 2018-6. I have a second. A second. Uh, anyone have any discussion about that? Uh, Mr. Quintero, you'd like to? This is just to extend this, uh, the current ordinance to expire January 1st, 2026. That's the only amendment to that. Any discussions? This, it's the juvenile curfew. Yes, ma'am. I do have, um, I came and talked to, to Chief Garvey today about this, and I think that you were um, in agreement. Um, so, um, for one thing that's not included in this, I had the officers one time bring one of my children home. And uh, believe me, it was only one time. But that's one thing that we need to include in this, is that um, to include parents. And this is my suggestion that we could maybe amend this <coughs> and add the um, to that section D under enforcement. The chief of police is encouraged to develop alternative enforcement strategies, which may include but are not limited to officers calling parents, returning mi minors to their residents and parents, counseling with minors and parents, issuing citations and or warning to minors and parents. I think uh, that's one thing that this is missing, is to include parent involvement. Anyone else? Anybody have 
there's a discussion about what she, her recommendation? I would believe that's under the chief's or PD's discretion as usual. They, um, I do it, have the chief's support with this. Yeah. Chief, would you like to say something? Yes, sir. <clears throat> like I spoke to her today, I totally get what she's putting. It's not going to hurt anything, but it is, uh, like all of them, Roberta said, it is a discretion. I told her that. We do that now. I mean, not everybody gets a curfew ticket. Not everybody goes to jail. They're 17. You can go to jail at 17. We make that discretion there, depending on what the situation is. We do that now. I mean, they know that. Any law enforcement officer knows that now. But again, I told her I have no problem with it. That would be for you guys to decide. But again, we do that now under discretion. But, uh, I think she got this from Dallas and Yes. It's in their ordinance. But again, we, we, we do that now. It's just not in writing. Do you feel as though it needs to be in writing to? I'll leave that up to you. I, again, it, it just adds to it. But again, we do that now. Yeah. I mean, we did, and that's part of the teaching that we, you know, explain during training. When you stop someone, hey, a kid just having a bad day, not mad at his mom or grandmother or whatever, and takes off walking at one in the morning, does he deserve a curfew ticket? Absolutely not. Let's take him back home, find out what's going on. They know that already. A kid's down there from Humble, Texas. He better explain to us why he's down there in our community from Humble, Texas at one in the morning. He's going to get a curfew ticket and maybe go to jail if he's 17. We already know that. So you think that by implementing something like that could take that discretion away? Well, yeah, I didn't know if it'd come back and bite you somewhere. I mean, it, it could. It, it could go your way. It could. Like I said, you can put it in if you want. That's for you guys to decide. But we're good. I mean, we understand that through training, what we're supposed to do. Yeah, it's like a, a ticket for speeding. Do we write everybody a ticket for speeding? Absolutely not. I mean, it's discretion. The guys want to, it's a case by case basis, totality of the circumstances. Chief, yes, I like it because it's just going to reinforce what you're going to do. Make a decision. Again, it does. It's it, simple. I mean, yeah. I got you right. And it's the right thing to do. Yep. I agree. Thank you. Woman Jones, do we have the language? That could be inserted into the into the ordinance. That we have. She has this a copy. Of this is this is Galveston's. a copy of Galveston's, and I gave that to. Mind if I pass it around? No, no, no. Anybody else want to have it? I just want to. Oh, you don't see it? No, no, we're going to. I I I got the gist of the intent. I know if it's my kid, I'd appreciate a call. When they get that, they get yeah. that without being. It just reinforces the way it's going to be anyway. That's the way it always used to be down here when it was just a security guard. He'd take you home with a truck. <laughs> well, the police are already actively doing that. Mm. So. Well, this clarifies and helps citizens know that that is in the ordinance and um, that, you know, a warning or counseling is available for the family too. I said, I don't have one problem with it. Um, one way or the other, um, but rather than, rather any, than I think any, most parents should already know that. I mean, really, shouldn't have to be told what to do. Show told what to do. But, but that being said, I, I do, I, I do see the validity in it. But I think it's something we need to. Uh, I don't have a dog in the fight anymore. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, then my kids are all grown. Well, um, grandbabies. <laughs> well, can I move to a, to make a motion to amend the curfew? Well, or? I can I can add that. I mean, like I said, do, that's what part of our discussion. Uh, do we? How would we do that? Uh, we would have a vote on adding the amendment, or add a. Well, I guess we would have a vote. We would. We would. With, with the amendment, we make the motion. Yeah. To with the amendment to. 
approve with right. amendment. And I need to know exactly what it is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 so I mean, I have to. One of these things is not better. Yes, you can talk about it a little bit more if we know exactly what we're going to do before we vote on it. Um, you mean you don't make sure the language? Well, I don't know what, what you're amending it to say. Yes. Well, under section D, I understand that, I've got that. And just add it to um, under that that section. Under the enforcement section? Uh huh. You're talking about the chief of police encouraged to develop, is that what you're wanting to put in there? Yes. The red part. I got you. Or should we consider showing it till we get the correct the, language? I believe this is a time sensitive item. Mm -hmm. Yes, so like yeah, it's, it's already is. expired. It was brought yes. up through Civic Plus. But oh. should we pass it as is and then come back at another time and amend? The, he brings up because what we're doing, we not only this meeting but the next two meetings, we have several more ordinances we are cleaning up, amending to, and doing things like that. We make make a deal that we would. Uh, come back and, and you'll, make, you'll, make me, you'll make me a deal that it will be on the agenda. Yeah. We'll, the, we'll rediscuss it. Well, yeah. that, that, that word encourage doesn't really say he has to or doesn't have to. Well, that's the whole thing about yeah. discretion. Yeah. Well, that's why I say I found this on the Galveston um, um, City website under their ordinance. So it's the same wording as Galveston. So if that's a deal that we would be oh, yes, bringing yes, it up. I don't have one problem at all. Oh, one problem. And it would be added to the agenda. Correct. We can even do it next month after we visit. Okay, next month. Did you have to approve this? This, this, is, this is time sensitive. We yeah. have to get this approved. Good point. Yeah, that's why we're, we, this is in rush right now. It's just getting it uh, the three it's years. expired. Yeah. Yes. So. Well, it uh, expired like last summer. Yeah, well, that's why it's time sensitive. Time sensitive. These are the well, cleanups yeah. we're trying to get done. It was done. January 1. Yeah, January, 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 January of this year. I see. Okay. At this point, uh, we're in okay, trouble. Okay, so that's a that's a deal. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We'll promise you. Uh, so, all in favor, as it reads, uh, <coughs> discussion and consideration to take action to approve the ordinance number twenty twenty three zero one, renewing the ordinance of twenty eighteen dash six. Which is the juvenile curfew. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. <coughs> and please put that on the agenda. Next item is discussion and consideration and take action to approve ordinance number. 2023-02, ordering the May 6th, 2023 general election. Ms. Nesbitt? Three cents. Basically, we have to order the election to with Galveston County to go ahead and set it up for the May 6th election. So basically, it's just We have a motion to discuss. I'll have a motion to discuss. Second. Um, and I have no discussion. Okay. <laughs> Ready to vote? Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Next item is uh, number three discussion, consideration, and take action to approve ordinance number 2023 03, amending ordinance number 2021 05, establishment of a reserve police force for the city of Jamaica Beach. Mayor and Council. Uh, we have a motion to discuss. I'll make that motion. Second. Second. Uh, Which one? He made it, I think. Okay, Chief Beardley, you may say something? Yeah, Mayor and Council. The only thing I'm bringing uh, before you is uh, currently the ordinance reads that uh, I'm only allowed to have 18 reserves. Um, I can name three agencies right now that have 30. I'm asking that you remove it up to 30, not that we will have 30, but don't limit me to, 30, uh, to 18. Uh, when someone wants to come do uh, free work and put their life on the line for the citizens of Jamaica Beach, why should we limit it at 18? The only cost there is is a uniform and a badge and an ID, which comes out to about $250, $300. So 
with that being said, again, uh, here recently we had 18. Um, I had some people that came and tried to get on, said, sorry, ordinance is 18, we follow the rules. And then two weeks later, I had three guys that left, three gals that left. And with that being said, those three that I tried to call back already had gone on to another agency. So all this is is basically giving me a little bit more room to hire up to 30 reserve officers, which we utilize, you know, here in this community during the uh, peak season uh, of the summer. So, well, I, I have a question here. Sure. When did we ever limit it at 18? We did a lot. Was that, we did was a that, lot. That, right. Right. Was that when Andy was chief? When, uh, well, May, because it got to be... 2021 was the order. Brian, thank you, Dad. May of 2021. I think we were doing that. We redid re it for some other reason. But before that, we cut it down because there were so many people, so many officers coming in, and there were a couple that were on the rolls that never came they were keeping their tea close hours and when they did come they didn't know you know it's kind of you kind of like to know your police officer sure. you know and i i get to know them because i go up and talk to them a lot of people don't and a lot of people are scared to yeah. but i've never been afraid to go up and talk to the police but uh you know it's just that's the reason we quit it the last time was because it was being, I think, misused a little bit. I assure you, we're getting each one of us putting in their yeah, time. Chief, Chief Garibay and I have had several yeah. meetings, long meetings about this, about increasing the training and getting some quality people here in the city and having an FTO uh, where they are trained out and get to know some of our local ordinances. And then the other thing is, we're going to be increasing these patrols come the peak seasons. So we're you know, really looking Jama at some Jamaica Beach is a kind of a unique place. We're small, and it sure is nice to know all your police officers. Right. Well, and also that's another discussion. Anyone that I bring in new, I, I, I gave them my word they're going to be sworn in in front of you guys, so you can meet mm -hmm. them that night. So again, it, we're going to get every free dollar we can out of each one. There's no on the list just to be on the list. And you know there's gonna, nothing free. Ain't nothing free. <laughs> you're gonna be a reserve, you're, you're gonna come put in your hours. Yeah. Well, and that's a, the other thing we, uh, Chief and I agreed upon was uh, they have to be here so many, they have to put in so they're, many hours. That's already on the now. list. Yeah, which there hadn't been before, and we right. made sure that it's happening now. We have, we have so a reserve on duty right now, as a matter of fact, we can FTO them tonight. Yeah. So the minimum they have to work per month is 16 hours. That's correct, man. The second part of it is, it has in the ordinance where it says that reserves will be hired and approved by the police chief and the city administrator. I don't know where that came from, but that's my job. I hire and I fire. And I don't need a city administrator telling me who to hire and who not to hire. I know law enforcement, that's what I do 31 years. I'm pretty good at you know, seeing backgrounds and knowing who fits our family in Jamaica Beach. So I'd ask that you change that as well, where it gives the chief of police the full authority to hire uh, full-time and reserve officers. Is that changed already, uh, Mr. Mayor? Uh, the it, last one is executive. Yeah, we, right. we just need to strike that out. Yeah. Uh, Several of them we have to do. Right. And, uh, and like I said, I can put it is that okay you. with everyone? Yeah, it'll be us, Woody, that will we'll strike that on our vote. Hasn't it already been updated? Is this updated? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's already been pulled. You should know ordinance I was given at city administrator on there. I don't know which one. Over. So it has already been stretched? And our, okay. what's in front of us, yes, sir. Yes, and what's in front of us. So we're accepting it's what's in front of us, yeah. which is having the cheap only. Yes, Park, yes. Any other questions for me? Um, one thing that we talked about today was just to clarify section four, where um, police force may carry a duty weapon and include duty weapon in that sentence. When she brought that to my attention, there's something wrong. It doesn't read that. It says the reserve officer may carry, and then it goes on to something. I think someone forgot to put it. 
an off-duty weapon, on-duty weapon, duty weapon. It doesn't say what to carry. It just says <laughs> to carry. I think it's some kind of old mistake. We need to somehow fix that as well. It was a valid point to where it says, and she's got the paperwork, uh, Alder Woman Jones has it, where it, it uh, forgets to include what they're carrying. This here says that on pawn chief's approval. Unless, unless is the correct one. Unless, officer, unless has been approved by the chief of police. So that gives you oversight over that. Once I yes sir. So this has been adjusted as well then. Again, whatever she showed me today, it, it was missing. Maybe you got the old one. It's on the, it's on the current item that's on the Excuse agenda me. right now, under section four. Did you read this so you can clarify for this section four? No person appointed to the reserve police force may carry, and I think that's what she's saying, a weapon or otherwise act as a peace officer unless he has been approved by the chief of police. But okay, the question I, is, may I'd carry. like to say something. It's a, it's a state, we don't give permission to let, for an officer to carry or not to carry. They carry all the time Correct. at their choice. I think we we should, don't get involved in that. And I, I, the whole sentence should be struck because we don't control that. We don't control that. Uh, we being, don't being a peace officer, I told her that, yeah. that it has to be done. When you're a peace officer, you're required to carry, yep. period. And reserve chief for clarification. Yes. Same thing. Yeah, same thing, you're still. On duty, all duty, you're members. required to carry. So if we were to move, Sounds like yeah, another candidate for the next meeting. Get it straight now. Is this time sensitive? This one is not, sir. I just need to know what you were making. Well, we just need to scratch line item four on this one. Can we just scratch line, on it, line item four and move ahead? Why do you want to remove it? Because, they, as they just stated, it's incorrect. Yeah, like the mayor, it, it is. Technically covered by state law. Yeah, we don't, it's, to, it's overruled by it us. Yeah. The state law says you must carry. It gives them the authorization as a peace officer once they are employed by a police sure. department to carry their weapon. Yeah. So then we need to take that out of the order. So just yeah. take so it strike. It needs to be Bring it back yeah. next month and we approve it. No, no, we don't have to. We can approve we it without striking up, right? it. <laughs> are you in favor of it? Are you see it? We could just approve and strike section four. Mm -hmm. Or you want to take out on. minimum training requirements? Sorry. It's in section five. Training. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's what we're saying. It's section five. Okay. Strike this yeah, just strike out all section five. Four. 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 Oh, sorry. Yes. Four. 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 Yeah. I want my officers training. Yeah. 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 Somebody started some hot coffee. We're going to Section four talks about the training. Section five speaks about uh, the more training. Section talks, four talks about carrying. So we can take Are you looking at the same one? That's what I'm saying, guys. So you're saying that section four shouldn't have even been put in there in the first place? You can you can remove it. Yeah, that's what you're saying. It's covered by state law, or you can simply just leave it just the way it is. Oh yeah. And just go back to what we were. It, it was just it, the, the language says yeah, carry. Four. The only thing we're you, know, you can either remove it or leave it, and we can move forward. Because we're, state, we're state, state, anyway. state law yeah. still state says law. you must yeah. carry it. Supersedes it. Yeah. yeah. Supersedes it. So you can leave it just the way it is. And just change reserves from 18 to 30. That's what I really But that's kind of the whole idea is we're trying to clean these ordinances yeah, up. Yeah, so that's why we create confusion. Yeah. yeah. Let's just out. take it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So all in favor of approving uh, ordinance number should two. Do you have a motion if we're amending it? Yeah. Yes. Okay. We're, we're talking rules of order here. I'll yeah. make the motion. Okay. Thank you, sir. Motion to approve ordinance uh, 202303, uh, striking section four. I will second that motion. Ready for a vote. All in favor? Aye. Uh, 
Aye. All right, making progress. Discussion, consideration, and take action to approve resolution number 2023-01, supporting the abolition of the county treasurer in Galveston. Did I miss one? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Discussion and consideration and take action to approve ordinance number 2023-04, amending ordinance 2019-8, to adopt the 2020 National Electro Electrical, Electrical Code. Code. Uh, I have a motion to discuss. I have a motion we discuss with it. Second. Mr. Quinn. It was brought to our attention by our city inspector that this, this needs to be done because we're under the under the old code of 2019. Mm -hmm. um, Just house people. Yes. Mm -hmm. And what we have in here is the corrected. Yes. Just making sure we are on the same page. <laughs> Any discussion? I don't. I'll make a move that we vote on this and approve. I do have a question. Yes, sir. Um, this far down, this one sentence says, whereas within said code, when reference is made to the duties of a certain official named therein, what does that mean by a certain official named within? So is there a certain official who is named? It would be the inspector. It would be the inspector on the that inspectors, one. Thank yeah, you. Mm -hmm. what it would be considered, yeah. And because they can't name all the inspectors, right. so that's what they're they're for the inspector at the time. It's yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Ready to vote. All in favor, uh, aye. aye. Number five, okay. discussion and consideration to take action to approve resolution number 2023 01 supporting the. Abolition? Oh, abolition. Abolition? I, I, I think there's a typo there. Of the, of the county treasurer in Galveston. That actually came from me from the <laughs> Copy and paste. That came from me from the. May I have a motion to discuss supporting the abolition of the county treasurer in Galveston? <laughs> I didn't type that thing so I, I want to point, point of order here. We can't have two <laughs> ordinance 2023-01s on our books. Um, so and this like, is a resolution. It's not an ordinance. It's resolution. Yes. It's a, it's yeah. a resolution. Did I do it? It's different. The first one of this year. For crying out loud. The very first one of this year. Does anybody have any questions on that? I mean, like I said, we've got reinforcements here to answer <laughs> questions. So no, we're, we're, never mind. It's it's a redundant question. Okay, well we're ready to vote. All in favor? Well, we're we gonna have. He already have, spoke. Okay. He was only here for right. question. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Who made the motion? Back. I missed it. David made the motion. Two second. Thank you, gentlemen. Sorry to keep you. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you for coming out. Nice to see you. Number six, discussion and possible action to approve a replat of lot eight, block nine, and block 11, lot 11, block nine, in section 25A, subdivision commonly known as 16507 Francis Drake and 16506 Mansfield Road, Jamaica Beach, Texas. Do I have a motion to discuss? I'll make a motion to discuss that. Second. Second. Yeah. Motion. Which one do you Yeah, I'll give it to you. Um, is there, do, I mean, is there any, do, is there any questions? Uh, it's all pretty much straightforward. Before the minutes of the meeting, because that was a special public hearing, you want to report it in the minutes. Okay. A request uh, to consider a replant of, uh, was given to the City of Jamaica Beach Zoning and Planning Commission. The replanting of the above mentioned properties that's on your paper of, is uh, combined to one property known as 16506 Mansville Road, Jamaica Beach, Texas. Uh, all the, all the, the application was published in the Galveston County Daily News, an official newspaper with a general circulation. Notice was sent to the property owners within the 200 
uh, 200 feet of the subject property. Uh, 15 count, 15 uh, notices were mailed uh, to the property owners within the 20 feet uh, of the property. Uh, the staff recommends that you accept this. Pretty planning and zoning also. It, oh yeah, they, it, it was unanimously approved by the planning and zoning commission. Thank you. Any discussions? Ready for a vote? All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Number seven, discussion and possible action to approve John D. Mercer and Associates Authority to post the notice to bidders for the 2023 waterline improvement project. Motion to discuss? For Curtis. Second. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Good. Ready. Um, Ready to vote? Uh, all, all in favor? Aye. Uh, number eight, discussion and possible action to approve the director of operations and mayor to negotiate a contract for water and wastewater operations. Uh, motion to discuss. Ricardo. Second. Second. Any discussions? All in favor? Pardon Whoa. me. Pardon me. Oh, you're um, Okay. You'll be negotiating a contract for water and wastewater operations. So this has to do with the water plant and operations at the water plant? That's the wastewater yes. side. Okay. <laughs> On June 20, on June 6, on January 16, 2023, an RFP was evaluated for RFP 2022-01 WWT. There was two respondents to, to the advertised RFP. The evaluation staff members and the city engineer reviewed and tabulated the RFP grading and score criteria set in, out in the RFP. After deep deliberation, it was determined that Branch Construction is the best company to administer the wastewater treatment operations for the city wastewater services and other water services for the city of Jamaica Beach. While no formal agreement shall be executed without the ratification by the Jamaica, city, uh, uh, Jamaica Beach City Council, Mayor Morrison staff request the authorization of the city council to negotiate with Branch Construction the contract's content and forward the contract to the city attorney for final draft and then city of council approval. That's what we're, we're talking about. Easy time. It's a little yeah. long-winded. Take it out in the package. What? The RFP? Yeah, that's yeah. what you just so said. We already. Uh -huh. We're not voting on the RFP. We're not voting, voting on the RFP. We're, we're just trying to negotiate a uh, uh, price. Right. An RFP is a request for a proposal, right? Correct. And right. then we bring that and proposal we'll back to council. Right. We, we published it. Um, in the newspaper, yeah. we publish it everywhere we're supposed to. The contract is out with USW. Yeah, we're the running contract month. is out. We're yes. running month to month with USW right now. So we've requested this proposal. Correct. From okay. in a, in an open RFP. Correct. Can I get when when uh, these kind of things come up? I, I, you know, can I, can I have the option to come to these meetings where these decisions are de are decided? I'm, I'm feeling very. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so the contract we're in now, we had to go out for a new contract. There's, and we went out for those contracts and received bids. There's no decisions decided until the RFPs are reviewed. But this is this is homework. This is standard operating procedure. It is, sir. Yeah. I saw in the minutes in our minutes that we just we just approved from the last November December. Were you going to to um, issue that RFP? Mm -hmm. But I was under the the thought process that we in council would see that before it was issued. The RFP. Yes. Why would we? Yes. Uh, that's, that's just standard operations. Yes. Yeah, this, this is what y'all pay me to do. Daily, daily operations. Yeah, I mean, I, I honestly, yeah. uh, 
And I'm sorry, did council vote on going out for RFPs? It's not just a matter of informing us what's going on. Yes, we did. Yeah, we did that back in December. We already voted in November. No, 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 and this is phase two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we asked for that. <clears throat> he said he was going to prepare it. He did. Right, and in the meeting minutes. Yeah, yeah. And I was expecting just basically as a courtesy that we would see what what it was. That's all. Let's see, see now, what maybe I'm out here. See, see what what was. The the contents of the request for proposal. You read it. Mm -hmm. That's all. Yeah, it's prepared yeah, by the engineers. Yeah. yeah. Reverse We want to read it. We don't know what's in there until that. They're usually quite. <laughs> yeah. It's it's generated. Generated. Yeah. 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 And we're trying to eliminate you from doing I mean, we can always That's do all. it. That's all. Yeah, I understand that, but it made it life simpler yeah. for you. Yeah. There's yeah. nothing in both of them. But to further this discussion, but to further this discussion to cancel, I am not comfortable okay with the issue i have it is always people okay and in this case it's the actual person that operates the waste treatment plant okay what we have down there his name is lester it is a guy that really understands our waste treatment plant he's been operating it faithfully for a year or so Okay, he also operates the Texas A&M facility on Pelican Island, that wastewater treatment plant. We're not comfortable with, guys, and Lorraine, is that, is that I'm a little concerned about losing the guy. He's dependable, he does a great job. It's always, our plant is not automated. It's a good plan. It works well. It is not automated. This guy has learned it. He runs it well. And we had somebody before him that ran it well too. Yeah. And then you know somebody before him. But that's yeah. it. That's my only yeah. my only concern. My concern is not losing a good operator. We're not looking at getting rid of him by any means. Yeah. You know what I mean. Now if we have problems about if staff has problems with with a contractor doing other work on the wastewater treatment plant or, or the water treatment systems, good. I mean, that's reasonable. I mean, staff should have a choice of contractors. I mean, if, if we have an emergency, one can't do it, you call the other one, right? That's correct. That part I'm okay with. But I, I am concerned about losing a good operator. And what we're talking about is the contract. Uh, those, those guys are licensed. Negotiable. Yes. Yeah, anyone we hire would have to be. I realize yeah, that. Yeah. But, and he also, he, he's respected by the people that inspect the plant. I've been down there working with the guy. I've been down there when inspectors came in. I know that they respect that guy. Mm -hmm. That's all. Thank you. Um, ready to vote? All in favor? I'm going to abstain. So it passes. Mm -hmm. Number eight passes. Number nine, discussion. No action will be taught, taken on no parking on Bob Smith. Uh, you heard uh, Citizen uh, Kaylin Willard and uh, I mean, what type of discussion, what type of ideas do y'all have? So we can see about, since we're doing I guess the most discussion. No, because there's no action to be taken. Yeah. Sorry, man. Yeah, no. Thank you though for reminding me. Um what's your what's your thoughts? Um, First one, I, I don't know, it's kind of a sticky wicket. Because uh, we're not responsible for that fence. We're not responsible for the marshland on the other side of that fence. I mean, I, I empathize with, with the request because it is, it's not right, but um, I, I just got the, 
that it's not it's not fixable by the city. And I don't think a no parking sign is going to fix it either. Um, I might be wrong. I would. But well, I think the challenge we're going to have is I've talked to some of the other residents there that face west, and they didn't want they want to be able to use that area for parking temporarily as they need to. I mean, I understand the for you know Montego and. Uh, Kingston and some of those other streets that are pretty small, but you get up there to, you know, Pelican, Flamingo, Curlew, Sandpiper, those streets are fairly wide. Just make sure that you're, that's not the area I'm talking about. It's way past that area. So, yeah, I, I, know, I, I know you're talking about Pelican and up, and I, I'm Pelican just trying to give the Pelican and, and back. back, sorry. And there's already two no parking uh, signs at the back the city has put up on Box Hill. Um, and the question is really not about the fence. Hang, hang, hang on, guys. We can't. This is we we gotta. We're, we're probably gonna open this up to a workshop so we can help discuss. Yeah. So everybody can talk. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, agree. Yeah. So let's put this on the next workshop, please. Is everybody okay with that? That's excellent. Okay. Uh, number ten again. Um, Discussion, no action will be taken uh, on the possibility of raising water rates. I have something to add to that is, you know, when we talk about that, we've got, we have a serious problem with infrastructure in our city. And I've talked to many citizens that are like, I want it done sooner than three years or five years or seven years. Because everything, you know, we have a very small budget. And we're talking about very expensive items that need to be done. Um, you know, without passing a bond or, or trying to speed this along, how do you get that money? Well, you know, and, and like I said, just for simple math and simple <coughs> uh, what if, let's say we put, we just raise the price on water, the whole thing, $25. Or suppose we said some, uh, maybe, maybe we have a trash increase, maybe we have a drainage fee. You know, we can, we can, we can, make it up whatever we want to do but let's say we just do $25 every month for every every home here that's about $360,000 a year that's barely a drop in the bucket for what we're needing done here because we're needing millions done you know we don't we you know we want we don't want to we we don't want to have to raise our property taxes. Uh, we, you know, at some point we're going to have to, but we don't want to have to do a big jump. You know, so we have to try to do this where it's manageable. And if you if you start having that savings account and put some money away for some of these items, uh, it can it can make it a little better, and we can we can move move some of our timelines up a little bit, which is, mm -hmm. I'm a big favor of. Even if we did, we could say, hey, let's do a, a, a temporary increase for three years or whatever, just so we get enough money to do something. We can earmark that money. We can, we can do a lot of things. But what we know what we're doing is not working. I mean, you know, it, it, it's working, but it's not working to the best of its ability. And that's what we try to do is uh, Russell and I spend a lot of time with these infrastructure projects. We're happy to do it, but our hands get tied uh, with these contractors as as far as, um, you know, giving them the green light on a $120,000 project. You know, it, it, it makes it tough. Yes, we have to bid all those out. Our, our ordinances say uh, $15,000 or $16,000. We have to, anything that un, over that needs to be bid out. But I, I, that's just what I wanted to say. I wanted to speak on that real quick, but I'll leave this up to uh, Russell and, and Robert. Mike? Hi, please. Okay, and you were right. We're all in the same area as far as water rates are concerned. It's pretty much <clears throat> average. But Mayor, you are, we are putting Band-Aids on top of Band-Aids yep. on top of Band-Aids over here. Now, a temporary, nothing's ever gonna be temporary, okay? <laughs> Yeah. You, you've heard of temporary taxes that never go away. But uh, 
possibly the water rates being changed. And I, as I look, there's other things uh, in other surrounding cities that we could probably go up on. Our garbage rate is way lower than most places, okay? Just way lower. Uh, it was funny, I mean, our, the, the city of Galveston, I noticed that I just looked at, finally, I looked, just looked through my water bill and they have a $7 drainage fee. I know what I can do with $7 drainage here. We can clean out the ditches and get rid of some mosquitoes, okay? But that's, that's not away from the water. We need to do something serious about this because we have paper thin pipes around here. And by the time we get to the different phases, uh, you know, it's, it's, we're gonna have a, it's a recipe for disaster if we don't do something fast. Right. Yeah, but please understand, see that dollar, or the dollar amount that Galveston's charging? Mm -hmm. We have to buy our water from Galveston. Yeah. So understand that, you know, we are losing money there. So that, that's, that's a negative to us every month. And we have to, we have to use other monies that help make up for that. And, and we're not in a position, we, we need to get as much capital as we can to do these um, extra jobs and projects that we're, we're so far behind on. So I, I, would, I would consider it like a water rate, but I would something like water project uh, fee. Yeah, no, that's a good idea. Water what? Water 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 so, so, so much. Water. I have a question for, for people who know more about this than me. And that is, okay, what does 260K yield get us? How much faster does, because how much faster does that happen if we get that? That's, that's I guess, the question I want to ask to Robert. And, and, and yeah, what, what was phase four? How much was phase four? I don't, I don't remember. remember. Seven, 760? No. 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 It was in the... The mid to low threes. I was gonna say like almost four hundred thousand or no three hundred eighty thousand. Uh, there was more than seven hundred seven thousand. Yeah. 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 So, okay. okay, so you're not quite answering my yeah. question. Yeah. My, my question yeah. has: How much can we crunch the timeline? Okay, because so we can. So, so, no, so that, that's where one I'm year, coming from. So, we, if we do this in one year, we could be able to do two phases next year. Right. Versus one. That versus versus one, one. Correct. And so, how many phases do we have left? Oh my goodness. Um, so yeah. five, six, seven? No. Ten. Ten. Six. Oh God. Two. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Okay. We have depleted our reserves and even cashed in a, uh, a certificate of deposits to get the last three done. We can't cash in any more reserves. We can't cash any more certificate of deposits. <coughs> We have to keep those reserves for a national disaster fund. Mm -hmm. We are out of money. The city did great saving all that money for these projects, but what the city didn't come to terms with is all of our infrastructure regarding our water supply has reached its shelf life. It's not if it's going to fail, it's when it's going to fail. We have replaced not even one I don't know, just over a sixth of our current water lines. We have a long, long ways to go. With this raise of rates, we'll be able to afford one, maybe one and a little <coughs> bit of change left over. That's for fiscal year. Yeah. That's not gonna be enough. That's just getting us started, all right? But we cannot, we're at critical mass. We are spending more in repairs monthly than we are spending on purchasing our water our sewage water waste water operations, our, our fees, our repair bill is killing us right now. I had a check come across the other day from the past 30, 45 days for over $60,000 in repairs. In hindsight, we should have gotten started on this 10 years ago, but who knew that everything was gonna give out at once. Robert commented that our pipes are paper thin. Guys, please remember, this water infrastructure was installed in the late 60s, early 70s. It was simply not meant to last this long. Okay, even 50s. There's also valves. We're behind the times on this. We have, this I think, should be councils, the cities, the staffs, number one on their list, top priority. And this this water rate raise is just, just getting started on. So, 
but thinking creatively, I mean, it's it's a matter of funding, right? Yes, correct. And how good of relationships do we have with Senator Middleton and uh, Congressperson Wilson? We're really good. I mean, can we put some pressure or some? Because this was this yeah. came up at HGAC that we can use some hot for this. <coughs> Because right. you know, we're drowning in hot money and we can't spend it. And mm -hmm. No, we're not. That's a misconception. But it's going to go away. I mean, every, every time they, we need something, they go, we'll go. Uh, it's going away. To get us over, we're just, just trying to get us over the hump here. We, uh, we exceed our, or we don't exceed, but we spend the majority of our hat, hot taxes annually. There, there's not a lot left over. That's a common misconception here. So back to these repairs. Can, can I touch base on one more? No, I want to. Yeah, thanks. There, there is, you're 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 headed in the right direction. That's great. Instead of going to to Mays, I think we should go towards granting solutions. Go to Grant Works. Mm -hmm. I also think we should approach the county. But this takes time, and right now the day-to-day -day operations on running our water emergency takes up damn near his full-time job, and. 30% of the time, I don't have any more. I'm still getting calls at 9, 10 o'clock at night from stepping in and helping out. So I'm, so I'm up for any help, any ideas. Yeah, I'm just trying to spit money, because we need money, obviously. We I think need, you're we need more than right. we, we need more than we can comfortably raise from our citizens. Yeah. Right. Now, I don't want to take yeah. away from this. This yeah. is this is a doable step one. No, that's this. doable, I mean, it helps. But and if, if, if I look at the bigger picture, it doesn't. That gets not the answer. Answer. It doesn't get the ball far enough down the field. Well, this uh, isn't our only issue. The sewer plant is in critical situation. It's working. Too. It needs to be repaired. There's some repairs that can be made. We're not running at full capacity, but we're running we yeah. past inspection so. Yeah. Now, and we were not able to get that into this year's budget. Correct. I, uh, somebody brought up, I believe a citizen brought up, that we just recently raised our water rates. I don't recall a water rate raise. Does anybody have the information when the last time we did? I've been paying a water bill for 20 years down here. I don't recall the last one. We had, no, I can't play. I remember, I'm sorry, I can't we, talk. I remember there was a meeting where the garbage or su no, sewer rate went down and we raised, right. we took that dollar and put it over here so it raised it. So it kind of balanced each other out. So we moved the dollar around. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, but I don't remember. I don't remember a rate hike at all. Rate hike, no. We're, we're, we're integrated. Yeah. We're, we're operating yeah. like we did 10 years ago. Like we're operating with the same the staff the and the same budget, and we're not keeping up with the times. <laughs> Tell me about the $60,000 you spent. Fixing things. If you can. Emergency repairs, non stop breaks. But we write work orders for those. Yes, sir. Okay, good. Yeah. If you can remember, let's get a total of our water, total work water replacement for next meeting. Just so oh, we can have, yeah, for all of them. Oh, please excuse me. Yeah. I ran down the rabbit, rabbit hole, but yeah, this has put a lot of pressure on myself, Robert, and staff lately. And I really, I want to move forward in the right direction. I don't want to wait for the next break. I want to get ahead of it. Right. Well, here's the thing, uh, guys. It, common sense tells us that I really think David's got the point that the big fix is that we look at grants, getting help, and spending the hot money. I know everybody always says no when we say this, but that's a legitimate, that's a good thought process. Okay, let me just give my expertise on the grant area. Excuse me? And give you the expertise that I have in the grant areas. Yeah. We're not a rural area because I've looked at that area as well. Uh -huh. Number two, the base income minimum meeting we don't income. like it I we don't fit it. so then you have to look for every avenue of, of, of doing this but at least Those, we look well i have yeah. i have that's what i do and we don't we, the income in here is too high to 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 be able to apply for these those funds infrastructure funds correct <coughs> okay so grants off the table pretty much okay. I, I, I will continue no. to look but that from what i you know I, i've gone through the rural i've really gone through yep. Through uh, emergency water, I, yeah, I've done it all. Well, so again, I think David's point about going up to yeah. Terry Wilson and to the right people and right see what they might say is a good idea. All right. But also, we need to fix the leaks we have. We've wasted water. 
<laughs> We're doing it every day. I know. I'm not, I'm not I'm criticizing. Yeah. But just think about it. It's not criticism. Okay? It's, it's not that. It's just we need we need to concentrate on We've got to fix the leak so we're not wasting more because we have to pay for it and we don't use it. I'd much rather spend the money on repairing and replacing the lines than fixing the lines. Yeah. yeah. Well, I would too, but repair. still, we have to stop, you know, wasting water and paying for it. And we're moving to phase four. That's what we're bidding out. One of the things that I haven't heard is the bait in, in Lorraine brought it up, it's the waste treatment plant, is the, the, the Bayside list station. We put $118,000 in our budget. Rob and I met in August mm -hmm. down there with Mercier. We have not received the engineer report yeah. as well, so yeah. So I was hoping to see this because here's what I'm thinking. From my experience, my knowledge, we're running those pumps on a low head. And those pumps don't do well if they run forever without a full head. Those, those, sooner or later, we'll have problems that have to replace the pumps. Mm -hmm. Or we'll have a failure out there mm -hmm. on that list station. So I was hoping to see that our engineers were and that's what moving we're, forward we're, on we're that so we could bid it. that out and get right. it fixed. We're waiting on that uh, engineering right now. Right. Yeah. 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 So I see now. where we're going to bid out the water lines. We need to do that too, of course. Mm -hmm. And the schedule looks good. We want to do it in March. We don't want to do it now. Mm -hmm. We went that through that with all what that, was her name? All that Zuzler, we're working on. Yeah. Yeah. And we buried a contractor in the mud. Yeah. Okay. Uh, at least everyone's aware of some of the issues. Uh, other than that, uh, Mayor's Report number 10. Um, you know, we've hired a uh, a, a building, uh, I'm sorry, a code enforcement officer now, uh, which is really helping us out. Uh, we're working with uh, Tiki Island to see about getting a building inspector and splitting it with them, a full-time building inspector. So we're not having to sub that out and we just share that. Since we're not big enough for a, for a full-time with us, just us, we would share it 50-50 with them. Uh, beautification, mm -hmm. y'all are doing great work. I mean, it's looking great, yeah. Um, we're, you know, I've instructed the staff um, and department heads that, hey, let's get updating our ordinances. Let's get updating and meeting, whatever we need to do. Uh, let's let's uh, check on our uh, building permit rates. Uh, we, I've already went through with the police department and the judge We've adjusted a lot of our ticket rates, and, and uh, that's been very beneficial. Uh, so just getting us all up to, up, up to the times. Um, the road striping, we're still working on. We've got several areas we're working on redoing striping, adding in, um, you know, like the pedestrian over here. We're just waiting for the template to be made. Uh, we've had that on since we started the plan over there. Um, I'll be doing a state of the city uh, next month uh, during council meeting, during the uh, business side, I'll be doing a state of the city meeting. Other than that, I uh, have a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Mm -hmm.